In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can easily create, produce, and distribute 100 plus pieces of content per week using a tool called Airtable, which is really functioning as a content management system. And I use this over generic project management tools like ClickUp and Monday.com because these are generic tools that are built for everyone. They are not specifically designed to help you and your team create, produce, and distribute hundreds of unique pieces of content across the internet. So in this video, I'm gonna cover the four main pieces of the Airtable system, which will include planning, creating, producing, and distributing content. So let's do this. So when it comes to content planning, we're going to focus in on this workflow section here inside the content tab. This is really the place where you and your team can meet once a week or every other week to talk about all the different ideas that you have and which ideas that you actually want to move forward with. It could be a blog, a newsletter, a podcast, a YouTube video. And when you finally decide on the content that you're going to create, it will move into the production workflow. Here you have different workflows for YouTube videos, for your podcast. If you're going to batch a bunch of videos where you sit down and you just record a bunch of videos all at once or your blog or your newsletter. So if we were working on a YouTube video, we could come into the production workflow. This is a Kanban board that you can move things through the various statuses. We can pick recording and publish dates. We can go through the thumbnail creation process. We can script out our videos. We can record them. We can edit them. And then once we've edited that video, we can repurpose it and turn it into clips for social media. And then we can ultimately close out that project. Now, what's cool about this system is that every time it creates a new project for a YouTube video, it's going to create a script that you can fill out and you can define a default script template. So every time you create that YouTube video, it's gonna give you this empty script to fill out so that you can have consistency. And it's also going to build out all of the folder structures in frame.io and in Google Drive so that you can keep things organized. So if I click here on the frame.io button, it's going to open up directly into frame.io. It already created these folders here so I can collaborate with my team. And it's also done the same in Google Drive. If I click this link, you can see here it created an entire folder structure for the original assets and the final assets and where we can store the thumbnail. And we can see here that we have that script. This is the same script that I showed you before. It really just sets up the entire project for your success. So this section here is going to help you with ideation and then working through the individual pieces of content through their own specific production workflow. Now let's take a look at how we can manage the individual pieces of content at a more granular level. Here I'm in the in progress tab and I'm on the overview. Here we can see all of the outstanding pieces of content in the system that need action. We can see the publish date. We can see what brand it's associated with, the workflow and the final media type. We can also get a snapshot of what is left to be done on this video. Here we need copy, video, and a title. We can see here we just need an image, maybe a thumbnail. And so at a high level, the project manager can come into this in progress section and see everything that needs to get done. They can also come into the media section here where they can assign a media editor. So you can see here this video is assigned to editor number one, and you can control the status of the media itself. You can also get direct links to play that media. You can review it. You can open up frame.io and play that video, provide feedback to the editor. We'll talk a little bit more about that shortly. You can also get quick access to the frame.io folder, which is going to take you to the project folder itself, where you're going to see all of the videos associated with that YouTube video or the podcast. And you can also access Google Drive. Again, just quick access to all of the different important things that are associated with individual files. And you have the same with artwork. You can see the thumbnails here that we're working with and you can see the status. It needs to be reviewed and which designer is assigned to it. We can also narrow in on the content that needs copy to be finished. We can assign that status. We can assign a copy editor and we can also use chat GPT to process the video and use the transcription to come up with a social media post. So you can see here we came up with two different options for a potential social media post. So you can review these, pick one, and you can further refine that text. And we also have access to the original transcript. And then as well, we can also filter down by just the content that needs a title. And you can see here as well that ChatGPT can also provide us sample titles. And then you can pick one of these and refine it and then ultimately approve that for distribution. The project manager can also further refine the content to only show content that's assigned to a specific video editor. So here we're looking at video editor number one. And if they wanted to assign a new video, we have four videos here. They could come back over to the media view and they could assign, let's say, C10. We'll assign that to video editor number one one and we'll move that to in progress. So if we jump back over to editor one, we're going to see that is in their particular unique view. It's in progress. The video editor is also going to get a notification in Slack that a new video is ready for editing. They're going to get three different links. One is going to take them directly to frame.io so they can look at that video and they can see any feedback that might be on that video. It's also going to give them a link to the original assets if they need access to the original recordings that they need to make some tweaks from. And they can also get a link directly to all of the outstanding work. So we send them a link to the new video 
video that we want them to edit. But we also give them a link to show them all of the outstanding videos that they need to work on. It's going to show them the publish date so they know what order to work on them, the brand, the workflow, the final media, the current status. It also gives them access to creative guidelines. So for this type of video for this brand, you can open this up and see exactly how you're supposed to edit this video. So there's no confusion there. It's great for onboarding new editors. Same thing with the brand kit. If you want to associate a brand kit with that type of video, again, you can open up that video directly into frame, access the original assets. And then let's just assume that the video editor was working on C10 and they have it ready for review. They can just jump over into frame. It's going to give them the frame project. They can just drop in the new video just like that. Frame.io is going to process that video. And if we jump back over to Airtable and monitor the status of that video, we are going to see the status here change to review. And again, there you can see that the status just moved to review. That will also trigger a notification in Slack that a new video is ready for review. If you are the person in charge of reviewing all the videos, you could simply open this up. You could check for any modifications. If you had some, you could leave some details. You could say, take this out. You could leave a comment, please take this out. Then you could simply move that status back into in progress. And then if we go back to Airtable, this is going to go ahead and move back to in progress. You can see here it just changed. And again, that video editor is going to get that notification. They can come and they can review all their outstanding work. They can jump into frame and then they can upload their new version. We'll go ahead and assume that they did that and we'll move this video to approved. And then what you'll find is that in back in Airtable, the media status will move to done. There it is. And you'll notice that that video C10 fell off the list because because it is now done and it's no longer needed to be tracked by that video editor and they can move on with the next video. Now, if you're a video agency, you can also segment the content by your clients. So if you open up this view here, you can create different views to show just the content that's being created or worked on for a particular client. And you can also give your clients a read-only view of that data as well so that they don't have to have access to Airtable, but they can see all the outstanding videos that you're working on with them. They can also access Frame. They can open that up. They can provide you feedback as well directly here, and then they can adjust the status so they can get that information back to you very easily. The Airtable system also functions as just a functional database. So we have every single piece of content that you've ever created in the database with a unique ID, and you can always use this to tag content. So we can tag every single piece of content that comes into the system. We can tag it with any number of tags that we want. So I'm going to tag this one with persuasive video and this one with content automation. And then later down the line, if you need to, you can always open up a search and search for specific pieces pieces of content, persuasive video. And then this is going to bring back all of the content. Notice that C21 is coming back because of that tag. So that's going to help us find all of the content that we want to go back to in the past and pull it forward and reuse it. So that's going to help us keep all that content organized. So if we need something from the past, we can easily find it, search for it, bring it to the top and then reuse it. So we've been working with our team to make sure all the content gets done and make sure it's assigned to the right person. When it's all ready to publish, we can check out the publishing tab. This is going to show us all of our content and help it get it out the door. So here we see a series of views to help us do that. Here's the today tab. This is going to show us all of the content that needs to go out today. It's also going to show us if there is anything outstanding on that piece of content that needs to get done before we can actually publish it. Here we see that C23 still needs copy, a video, and a title. The icons that you see here are updated in real time. If I jump back over to the in progress tab and look at media for C23, we'll find C23 real quick here. Here's C23. If we go ahead and move the status to done and jump back over to the publishing tab, then we'll see that that video icon is no longer showing up for C23. And then if we were to approve the copy as well, C23, we'll move that to done. And then we'll go to the title because I noticed that C23 also needed a title. We'll go ahead and put in the title. And then we can put in the status, done. And then if we jump back over to the Today tab, we're now going to see that this piece of content is ready to go. So ideally, you're fixing these issues in your workflow well before today. And that's also what the Tomorrow tab is for. So this is going to show you everything that's going out tomorrow. If I move one of these published dates to tomorrow, we'll see it disappear from the Today tab, and then we'll see it on the Tomorrow tab. And there's also a view that lets you see all of the content, regardless of its published date, so you can get a bird's eye view of everything that is scheduled out. There's also a calendar and then you can also see everything that has been published. And of course, if you need to segment or filter the content for your publishing in different ways for different clients, you can obviously copy these views and duplicate them and just tweak the filter up here so that you're only seeing the type of content that you need to see for that particular view. Now, this system lets you publish everything manually. So if you want to publish manually, and there's a lot of good reasons to do so, what's great about this is the system's going to bring everything that you need to publish right here. So whoever is responsible for publishing the content 
student can come in here, they can get access to the copy, the image, they can download everything, and then they can publish it and they know exactly where they need to publish it. Now, there are also automations that you can use if you want to auto publish so that you can use platforms like Metricool and you can use their auto list feature and their auto post feature so that you can take all of the content that you have already stored in Airtable and Google Drive and simply push that to Metricool without actually having to re-download everything and then upload it again to either social media or to another scheduling platform. And then what's also nice is that you can take advantage of Airtable's interfaces, which allows you to create different views. You can create different analytics that show you how much content is scheduled for the week, how much is ready, how much is not ready, and to what different platforms. So you can start to build out your analytics to give you a bird's eye view of how your system and your team is performing. And then you can figure out where the bottlenecks are. And then you can use those insights to go back to your team and improve the situation. So there you go. There's a good overview on how Airtable can help you create, produce, and distribute content at scale without losing your mind. I hope you found this video valuable. Make sure to check out the next video that's going to pop up on your screen right now. I go step by step on how you can build out your own simple Airtable database and some of the automations to get you started. So check out that video and I'll see you there.